Welcome to the Pentecostals of Springfield Media Ministry. I know we all wish we could be together right now, but due to the crisis in our world, it has left us all separated. However, the Bible does declare that no one can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I believe this devotional will strengthen you, it will encourage you, and it will lift your faith. And I pray it blesses you in the name of Jesus. I want to open up with a passage of reading that I've come across when I was studying and and preparing for this uh, devotional. The book of James, chapter 5. Now, James was the brother of Jesus. He was um, actually one of the main writers of the New Testament. He was a new church leader. Um, For a beginning portion of his life, he didn't really even believe that Jesus was God, but later on he came to believe him. But anyways, in his writing, he talked a lot about suffering and, and the Christian response to suffering and, and situations and, and things of life that just go wrong or go are just, are just happening that maybe people are struggling with or, or are going through. And he talked a lot about how we as Christians, we as, as apostolics, should respond to the world, life, circumstances. In the book of James chapter 5, starting at verse 7, James wrote, he said, Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Don't grumble against one another. Brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remained steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job and have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. When I think about the world, when I think about things that are going on, I I like to, I think I might have said this, but I like to look back at the early church and how they responded at at situations and occurrences. The church has never been um, guarded from suffering. Uh, A large portion of the early church's existence existed in an age of suffering and pain and and just question and confusion. But the, the church has always thrived in perilous times whether war or famine or disease, the church has always been and will always be the light shining on a hill that Jesus called it to be. The New Testament church, during times of strife, they were actually known to be the group of of believers that comforted the worried and the fearful and the sick and the dying. They were actually known to go out and to be the ones to put themselves in the forefront of situations of disease um, and take care of those that were left dead and dying by the ones that just were scared out of their minds. So the early church actually started a lot of the first hospitals and, and places of, of healing because that was part of their great commission from Jesus. Jesus said, go out into the highways and byways. He said, he said the, 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 the well have no need of a physician. And so when I think about how I want to respond in these weird and crazy times, you look at the economics, the, the markets, the, the, the pandemics that are going on right now. You look at it all, and there's a lot of voices, a lot of confusion happening in the world. There's people saying this and that. And we were talking earlier with my in-laws. We were talking about how, you know, there's, there's so much being said that people are looking at the same information, the same data, and they're coming out with two totally different, contradicting perspectives. And besides all that, I think it's important that we as Christians, we as apostolics, we look at the scripture. We turn back to what does the Bible say? What does the book say? Because that needs to be our response in times of of fear, in times of worry. Um, When I I think back to the, the, the certain passages in the New Testament, the book of Hebrews comes to mind. In Hebrews chapter 12, the writer of Hebrews talking about Jesus, he said, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance 
the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I want you to look at this one part. I never really came across this until I began to study for this, this devotional. Uh, the writer of Hebrews in chapter 6, he says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. The joy that was set before him, what joy was he talking about? He's talking about heaven. Jesus was willing to, to suffer the pain, the, the torture, the torment of the cross because beyond what he experienced here on this earth, beyond what he was going through here, he understood that this wasn't home. This wasn't the final spot. This wasn't his home. So he was willing to endure for our sakes, the cross, the pain, the, the suffering, so that we might have future, a uh, future hope, future rest, future peace. And this is, a, this is a theme that's picked up on in other parts of the scripture. Paul, the apostle Paul, in Romans 8, he said, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Later on in chapter 8, he says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it's written, he says, he says, For your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I, am not sh for I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. To Paul, who was no stranger to, to suffering, to situations, he understood that in the midst of suffering, in the midst of our trials, of our tribulations, beyond what we were immediately experiencing, he knew that we could fall back on something that the world, that those that are, that are not in truth, can't fall back on. And what, is, what that is, is, is the love of God. He understood that in the midst of our trials, in the midst of things that we're going through in our life, nothing can separate us from the love of God. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've gone, no matter what you've said or what you thought, there is nothing that will separate you from the love of God. God requires of us to experience that love. He says, hey, come to me, all that are weary, and I will give you rest. In this season, I think there's a lot of people experiencing weariness, whether it's from their job loss or, or the economy or whatever. I think there's a lot of people experiencing weariness, and I've experienced it in my own life. There's been times where I was just so overwhelmed by all that was going on that literally all I could fall back on was, hey, God loves you. I remember when I was in Bible college, I was going through a really tough time. I was just struggling in my mind and, and just really going through some things. And there was a professor of mine, uh, he was a missionary to Germany for a while, Brother Rash. He, um, in, in one of our church services, I was just praying and weeping at the altar. And I was right next to where he was sitting. And he, he came over to me, older man, just an awesome Christian. And he leaned over to me and he said, he said God loves you. And it was in that moment that I, like, never had felt the love of God as strongly as I did in that very moment. In that, in that one word coming from that elder, he said, God loves you. And since then, I've been able to hold on to something that I was never able to hold on to before. And that was the love of God, the overwhelming, inexhaustible love of God. So I don't know what you're going through in your life. I don't know what your, your pain is, your, your, your situation, your finances. I don't know what's going on in your family or anything like that. But I do know that the Bible teaches us without, the sh without a shadow of a doubt that there's one thing that we as Christians, that we as believers in God can fall back on at any point in time 
That's the love of God. The Bible teaches us that what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And so in the midst of everything that's going on, in the midst of all the confusion, the noise, the voices, the, the, the just rhetoric that just never stops, if you are going through something right now, if you're struggling with something, if you're facing something right now, I want to, to, to tell you about the love of God. It's, it's inexhaustible. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. And unfortunately, sometimes it can become a cliche in our lives. Unfortunately, it can become something that we just, we, we all, God loves you. We, we, know, we, we know it. But until you experience it, until you've, until you've truly experienced the love of God, You'll, you'll never really understand it. But in this season, I think that it's vital that we as Christians, we get back to a place where we know that God loves us. He is our heavenly father. Bible teaches us that if our earthly father knows how to give good gifts, how much more does our heavenly father? In this season, in this time, even going forward beyond what we're experiencing right now, I think it's vital that we fall back on the love of God. How do, how do we experience it? How do we, how do we experience that love? And I, I personally believe that the best way is through prayer, through deep times of prayer, of meditation on the Spirit of God. It's in prayer that we really experience God. Even Jesus prayed. Jesus found time to pray. He found time right before and right during the hardest part of his entire life. He was found praying. And it's not easy. I'll, I'll, I'll speak to that. It's not easy to find time in prayer. It's not easy. There's a lot of other things. We're so, such a distracted culture. And as, we'll, as, as we understand probably more in this time period, there's more that we're being distracted by than ever before, even in the midst of a quarantine and all this craziness. But even Jesus found time to pray. So what I want to challenge you today is, is understand that God loves you. God cares for you. Beyond everything you're experiencing or going to experience, even in the coming months and years, God is there for you. But you need to draw close to him. The Bible teaches a principle that, that God will draw near to you if you draw near to him. In this season, spend time in prayer. Look, look to Jesus. Look to his example in the midst of the Garden of Gethsemane. Go and pray. Find time to connect with God. Because no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing right now or what hardships or even if you're having a good time in the midst of all this, I've been baking up a storm. Even if you're having a good time in the midst of all of this, it's time to pray. It's time to find God. It's time to experience the love of God. So if I can challenge you just, just for the next little while, find a few minutes. Find a few moments in prayer. Find some time to pray. If you don't pray for five minutes, pray for five minutes. Build on your relationship with God and he will respond. Take time. Enjoy the spirit of God and things will change in your life. Things will be different in your life. So I just want to challenge you for a little while. I want to challenge you today. Find God in the midst of suffering. Thank you.